Great evening, great evening, great evening, great evening. Hey, folks, hey, this is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin here from Houston, Texas. And welcome to another Millionaire Midnight Rant where I give all of you, men and women, teenagers, child, children, girls and boys around the world to have a conversation with me, Wesley Virgin, a self-made millionaire here from Houston, Texas here. So how's everybody doing here? Hello. And I know it's late here. I've just been busy. I just landed back from Puerto Rico. I am now back here in Houston, Texas, and I'm glad to be back here down south. Feels good to get back in the gym tomorrow. It's going to be a great uh, few months before I have to travel again here. But I wanted to definitely jump online and have a conversation with you here. And if you're brand new, let me know in the comments below here. But if you're brand new, listen, I'm just a regular old black guy from Houston, Texas that became a self-made millionaire. And now it's my purpose. I've made it my purpose, my responsibility to make a massive contribution to the world, sharing my philosophies, my ideologies about manifesting dreams, about understanding the mind, about emotional intelligence, about increasing your individual quality of life, and also being able to navigate this world in a way that you get more of what you want instead of what you don't want. And it's all science-based, and it's not hard, and but it's not easy, but it is possible here. So tonight... I, I want to do a Q&A here. Okay, we got a lot of newbies here. How many of you are new Genie Script members as well? Comment below here. Okay. So, let me give you guys a shout out. I haven't did that in a while. So, if you want me to give you a shout out, all you need to do is put your name below. You can put where you're calling from as well. And then we can start some Q&As here. And all you need to do is post your question it could be about your business, maybe your first year entrepreneur, maybe you've been, been in business for a while and you're making money, but you're not making enough money. Maybe you want to learn how to automatize your business. Maybe you want to learn how to manifest your dreams. Maybe you have blockages. Maybe you just want to be happier. Maybe you want to learn how to become a happier, fulfilled person with a purpose. Not sure what you want, but post your questions below and I'll definitely do that for you. <laughs> well, we got Mrs. Virgin on here. What's going on, Miss Virgin? How are you doing? <laughs> oh, she is so funny. Taryn. Oh, you're amazing. Hey, Jessica, how are you? Uh, we have we have hands from Queens, New York. What time is it over there? Yeah, it's approximately twelve forty seven AM here in Houston, Texas, CST time. Um, go ahead and comment your name and say below. Hey, Joshua, how are you? Good morning. Can you guys hear me properly? Let me know if you can hear me. Just tap on the screen. Give me a love. I always appreciate the love and kindness that you guys share with me every night here. Hey, did you miss me? I, I've been busy. I, as you folks are aware, I took my, my daughter to Puerto Rico for the weekend. We went to the Dorado Ritz Resort. Listen, if you ever get the opportunity to go to Puerto Rico, okay? Um, St. Juan, make sure that you go to the Ritz Dorado Reserve. Oh, my God. Uh, it's not that expensive, so not too bad. Maybe four, five thousand 5000 a night. But it is absolutely breathtaking. My daughter had the best time of her life. She confirmed that this was her best birthday ever. She says it every year. So next year... When am I going to do it? I don't know. I got to top it, right? But she had a great time. We had a great time with her best friend that was out there as well. And we just created experiences and moments. And listen, let me tell you why that's important to me. Because all the sacrifices that I made, um, especially in my later 20s, you know, all the struggles, the pain and failures, that all accumulated up 
to the moments now that I get the opportunity to create with my children. And, you know, my children, I love them to life. They're like my best friends. They really are. We're, I'm very close to my children. Um, and, you know, I'm just molding them and I'm setting them up for success. I'm giving them a head start. And I believe every man or woman on here that has a family or if you have a desire to have a family, that's what you're supposed to do. You want to set them up and give them a head start in life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually as well. And I've done that. I'm proud of them. They have made me a happy father. All my children, it just, it just gives me chills to just think about how much they have progressed and what they're doing and what they will do. So let me see here. Let me. You're still there, Wesley? Yeah, I'm here. Wait, can you guys hear me? Oh, my God. Let me know if you can hear me, folks. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Taryn says she's my Ferrari passenger. Princessa. I agree. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Hey, give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. All right. Hey, Dominique Portis. Hey, Randy, what's going on here? So let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and post your question below. And listen, um, this is a rant, which means is I'm extremely unfiltered. If you're looking for a professional conversation, you're at the wrong rant, okay? Um, listen, on the internet, it's so many different videos and books, books that you can read, videos you can watch about making money, being successful, blah, 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 whatever. I... I, I listen, I credit myself on just being very blunt and transparent, even if it hurts your feelings, because I think, you know, I get it. it's a ton of people that want to be rich and successful. It's a ton of people that want to be, but it's a very small, small amount of people that are actually committed to being this way. Right. And I'm going to keep it real with you. Like, if you're fucking up, I'm going to let you know you're fucking up. If you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing. If you're wasting your life away, <laughs> doing nothing, I'm going to tell you that. If you have vices and you have all these type of um, addictive habits that are debilitating and innovating, then I'm going to let you know as well. Right? This rant is all about not just making money, but being the extraordinary self. Okay? I call it the extraordinary self. I, I believe that. God, if he created us, God created us to be extraordinary. He doesn't want us to be half-ass. He doesn't want us to be normal nor regulatory. He doesn't want us to be mediocre. He wants us to express ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually to our highest potential. And um, that's what I do on a daily basis. That's what I love to do, um, becoming a better man in every aspect of life. And this is the message that I pervade around the world. <laughs> Taryn. Taryn is so funny. She says, how do you get your gym boo to take you on a date? That's a good question there, um, Taryn. Well, maybe you need to ask that person. <laughs> uh, or maybe, you know what, Taryn? Maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking outside the box. Maybe you need to, maybe I, I'm just being hypothetical here. You know, maybe you need to show up to the gym. I don't know. Maybe if that person shows up more, then maybe they'll have an opportunity to go on a date. I don't know. I'm just speaking hypothetically here for if they able to see that face of yours. You know, I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> All right. What's next, folks? Talk to me. Ask him to spot you for the squats. Oh, that's funny. All right, next question for me. Talk to me. How do you deal with the adversity from family and friends, especially once you've become successful? Uh, that's a good question here. So if I can share my personal story, if you don't mind. Um, I knew, okay, I knew in my later 20s, early 30s, that I was going to be a very successful person. Now, you might think, well, how did you know, Wes? And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I can't tell you how I did know, but I just knew 
I was going to be successful. I just knew it. And maybe that was the cockiness about me or the arrogancy in me that allowed me to think that way, but I just knew I was. And at that time, I didn't, I didn't particularly have any type of academia education. At that time, I didn't have any type of mentorship. Uh, no guidance at all, but I just knew I was going to do it. So when I did, uh, before I made money, I decided to release people in my life, okay? Because I knew that once I make money, well, it's obvious, right? You know, I want every, all of you to understand this. Like, it's very obvious that people in your family, friends, family, they're going to ask you for money, right? Are they going to share their problems with you? They're going to congratulate you, but at the same time, they're congratulating you. They're going to say, well, you know, I had this deal right now. This happened to me, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's going to happen to everybody. Some of you that are already very successful, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. And let me tell you something about people, and especially the people that love you. They will suck the living energy out of you. Can I get an amen? Be honest. I mean, they will suck every dime out of you if they can. Okay? And you have an emotional attachment to these people, so you feel compelled to do it. So what I did, I released everybody. Okay? Um, I no longer talked to cousins. I didn't no longer talk to aunts and uncles at all. Okay? I decided to... Um, several of those relationships and I didn't really have relationships with all my family anyway besides from Christmas Christmas time you know Christmas whatever those Christmas events and family reunions so I stopped going to all those things we used to have a game night with my family with the cousins it was like the cousins game night anybody can relate well I didn't go anymore okay and the reason why I didn't go anymore because I knew exactly where I wanted to go and they didn't want to go the same way that I wanted to go. You got two types of people in life, people that talk about where they want to go and people that do it. So I just had to be a doer. And I, and I realized just going to the game nights was just not beneficial to me because I was working on my goals and dreams. So listen up here. Once I finally made some money, I didn't have to deal with family nor friends compelling me or convincing me or persuading me to give them money. I didn't have to think about the adversities because I wasn't having a conversation with them. I didn't have that type of relationship with them. So what I would share with all of you, now listen, I'm not telling you to cut off all your cut off all your family because I know many of you would never do this and I get it. And I know some people right now that are wealthy or they have a little money and they still have their friends and family. But let me tell you something. If you're the only person in your family that's doing well, if you're the only person that's doing very well, and um, you, you're you going to be the person that they're going to call, it's just going to happen. It's, and you better be ready for it. And as long as you can say no, you're good. But if you can't say no to these people, you're going to be very frustrated. It's going to irritate you. So I just made a decision to sever the ties and it's not because I don't love my family. I love my entire family. I love them. I love my family on my mom's side. I love my family on my father's side as well. But I had to make a decision that the old Wesley, okay, like the 20-year-old Wesley, he didn't exist any longer. Because the 20-year-old Wesley didn't have a business. He wasn't an entrepreneur. He wasn't that responsible. He was rebellious. He was very dogmatic. He didn't listen. So it's a lot of things I had to change about myself. And what I realized, you know, family or friends, they didn't change. They were still familiar with the old Wesley. And the old Wesley was dead. Okay. So it's not that I don't love my family. I love them. Trust me. I love all of them. I don't, but I don't talk to them because we have nothing to talk about. Because what I want to talk about is not what they want to talk about. I give you a great example. Like, <clears throat> if you like basketball and I like soccer, and I don't like basketball, I like soccer, and you don't like soccer, and you like, well, we can't have a, we can't have a conversation about sports because you like a different sport. I don't know anything about basketball because I like soccer. 
And if you like basketball, you don't like soccer, then what are we going to talk about? Because you want to talk about what? Basketball. I want to talk about soccer. So it's always going to be this conflict, and it's just going to be this awkward feeling of, like, we can't even have a conversation because we are trying to talk about something that we don't like, uh, that we only individually like. So same thing with life and success and as you start to grow. So I made a decision, and I'm going to tell a lot of you, just think very deeply, depending on where you are in life financially and where you want to be. Just think about the person that you want to become and ask yourself this question, say, are the people that are around me, do they support that? And are the people who are around me, are they emulating the behavior, the attitudes, the values that I would like to have? That's it. And if the answer is no, then you have to make some tough decisions here. You know, I tell everybody, you know, making a million dollars was the easiest thing I've ever done in life. Like, honestly, making a million dollars was easy. But, like, believing that I was going to make a million and also not just believing that I can make a million, being able to let people go out of my life, even though I love them. Like my parents, I love my parents, but it's times that I can't talk to my parents because I got to get focused. It's times that I can't have just futile, just, I don't want to say useless, but, you know, just non-important conversations, right? And it's very hard to communicate to a person that doesn't have a dream or that's not committed to their dream. It's very difficult to communicate to them why you can't talk to them any longer. Like for for six months, you know, because they don't get it. They were like, what do you mean you can't talk to me? I'm your friend. I'm your parent. I'm your brother. I'm your, you know, but most people, unfortunately, they have dreams, but they're not committed to their dreams. And a man or a woman that's committed to something, that's all they think about. Honestly, it's just all they think about all day long. And I get it. You might say, well, why you don't have fun sometimes? Why you just can't go out? Why you can't do this? Well, because I'm just committed to the dream, you know? And it's like being, like if I was committed to a woman, I'm not talking to other women, right? Because I'm committed to her. So I can't, I'm not going to have a conversation with a person. Say, well, why you not? Do? No, because I'm committed to her. All right? So when I'm committed to a dream, that's all I think about. That's just, that's all what it is. I don't want to do anything else. Okay. Because I'm committed to what I want. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Are you getting value here tonight? Come on, give me an amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me something here. All right, next question here for me. And yes, Taryn, I have a feeling that that young man that you want to take you on a date is going to take you out, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> What's next, folks? Talk to me. How to launch a coaching business? Well, <clears throat> first, you have to determine like, what, what are you going to be coaching about? Like, what is, when you say coaching, coaching about what? I will start with social media first, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and start creating videos and giving out free content. And at the end of the content, have a call to action, you know, either you sell them on a program or you sell them on a mailing list. You say, hey, put your name here and I give you more free content. But use social media first. Just use what's free. You don't have to spend any money on the advertisement, folks. All right. What's next here? Oh, I almost forgot. High energy, high income. Do I need to scream that? Come on now. Raise the energy, baby. High energy, high income. How many of you want higher income? Raise your hand, even if you're laying on your back right now in the bed. How many of you want higher income? What if you want higher income? Raise the energy, okay? Raise your vibration. Raise the positivity. Put a smile on your face right now. Do it right now. I don't care if you're butt naked in your bed. Hey, put a smile on your face right now. I don't care if you got bills, you got debt, heartbreak, whatever. Who gives a fuck? 
Put a smile on your face because you're alive. Put a smile on your face because tomorrow morning you have an opportunity to be able to increase your quality of life. Tomorrow morning you can make new decisions. Tomorrow morning you can make new friends. Tomorrow morning you can cut off people that you need to cut out of your life. Tomorrow morning you can tell everybody no. Tomorrow morning you can tell that person yes. Tomorrow morning you can tell the person that you care about I love you. I mean, tomorrow morning there's so many opportunities that you can take to begin to transition your life, okay? Talk to me. Questions for me here. I love it. I love it. I see these queens on here tonight. Got so many queens. All these beautiful women on here tonight. I'm an interior decorator, which I love, and I would like to know the best way to monetize it. Okay, so you're an interior decorator. So I assume that you are, but when you say you want to monetize it, like what are you doing right now to sell your services? Because to be an interior decorator, you're going to people's houses and you're designing their homes, correct? Another thing you could do is you can sell, like depending on how much money you're making with the business, you can sell the intellectual property, which means as you're an expert in that field, you can sell it online. It's digital marketing, by the way, right? Or informational marketing, which means is you can create a course and say, hey, you can become an interior decorator. You can make this amount of money and I can teach you exactly how to do that. You can create a course. What a lot of you don't understand is many of you right now have a million dollar idea in your in your brain right now. Like in your mind, what you do, whatever you do and whatever you do very well, you can sell it as a course. Information is being sold all over the world on a daily basis for billions and billions and billions of dollars, right? Like if you have a business right now, even if you are making 5000 extra a month, you know you can sell that as a course? Do you think the average person is making $5,000 a year, you know, worldwide, the average income is about what? I think like forty, forty-five thousand. The top one percent is forty-five thousand a year. I mean, that's like in the world. Top five percent in America is four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. So, folks, do you not realize that people are not making a lot of money? So you don't have to make a million dollars before you create a course. You can have a business making an extra two thousand dollars a month. Say, you know what, guys, I'm doing this business here. I'm making two thousand dollars extra a month. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. You know, just pay me four ninety nine. I'll show you how to do it. You can sell that right now. You don't have to wait to make a million dollars, folks. I mean, honestly, like intellectual property and informational marketing is the thing right now. That's uh, it's making a ton of people very wealthy. Okay. Should I use AI to create the course and tear decor? No, I mean, you, you can use AI, but if I was you, I would just create videos showing people step by step exactly how to be an interior director, a decorator and how to do it very well. Okay. What's next here? Who wants to go live with me? Yeah, I haven't been live in a while. Let me give you guys a treat. Let me go live with you folks. Who wants to go live? Let me know if you would like to go live. Uh, let's go live right now. Who wants to go live with me? Just come to work go live. Listen, if you want to go live with me, make sure that you have your camera on. I need to be able to see your beautiful face. Okay. I need to be able to see you clearly here and ensure you have a question ready for me because I want to go live with other people. So be very respectful of other people's time and let's just get right to it, right? So I can help you. I'm here to help. I'm here to make a contribution to you. It's free. It's pro bono. So utilize it. All right. Yeah, I know you can't see me. I know. Let's go live with Oh, for some reason, I can't go live with you. I don't know why. Jeremiah, for some reason, I can't go live with you. Okay, S1 Beautiful. I own a bar that I want to be more successful and profitable. I purchased the script three weeks ago. I need help. Okay, great. So, 
Tell me more about the bar. How are you getting customers? Um, I assume you're selling alcohol. Are you selling food? But the key, obviously, to any business is just customers, honestly, right? So what are you doing to get customers in the door? That's what I need to know. Okay. <laughs> Taryn says she's back. Taryn, you missed my whole bit about you. I was just talking about you for the last five minutes. You just missed out. Get your butt to the gym. Hey, Katie, how are you? All right, next question for me here. If we want to go live, like I said, if you want to go live, we can go live. Hey, Vicky, how are you? Yeah, Jeremiah, I'm trying to go live with you, but for some reason, um, I'm unable to do it. I don't know why. It's not giving me the option to do that. Questions for me, folks. Open your mouths. Come on. Unless you, all of you are living your dreams. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm not going to lie to you. Life is good over here. Life is great. Life is perfection. Perfect. Perfect. Perfecto. All right. Let's go live with... Um, oh, we have a question here. How and where do you surround yourself with successful and rich people if you want to become one? Well, do what Taryn Smith does. She plays golf for rich people. Go to the golf course. Rich people love it. Like I, like me personally, I'm not a golfer. You know, I try to do it. It's not my thing. I just, I, I don't, you know, no. But rich and wealthy people, that's what they, they like golf. Go to the golf course. Okay, two, go to five-star restaurants in your town or city. Because successful people, that's where they go. Successful people take care of themselves. So they want to eat the best quality of food. And they want to be around everything that's five star. It's just how it is. Like I went to the resort that we stayed at. My particular room cost eight thousand dollars a night, only because I did a two bedroom, and it was gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie, it was nice. Um, but everybody at the resort would, was definitely wealthy because every the I think the cheapest villa was like four thousand a night at that reserve in Dorado. So. I mean, everybody was wealthy. So when you go to those type of places, you're able to meet certain people. Now, I, I get it. You might say, well, Wesley, yeah, I can't afford that right now. Listen, this is what you can do. Say if you fly to an, a resort or to Mexico or wherever you're going to go, you get yourself a little cheap room because that's all you can afford. But then you go over to the five star. You, you can buy a day pass. Because your goal is just to surround yourself around the people that you want to be around with it. And listen, folks, you got to realize, like, you got to fight for this shit, right? You just can't expect rich people just to be like, oh, and want to talk to you. Like, because you might say, oh, I got to I gotta go to a faster restaurant. I got to go here. I got to. Yeah, you got to do something. Hello? You want to be a part of the 1%? You got to get your ass up and go do something. I mean, it takes work. It takes getting out of your comfort zone. Go to the Lamborghini dealership. Rich people are there. Go to the Rolls Royce dealership. They're there, right? Go to one of the expensive gyms. They're there, right? So you have to do something. You can't expect that just because you show up and then rich people are going to talk to you and give you a deal. You got to put in the work. Go to the five-star restaurants. Go to the five-star hotels. Dress up really nice, right? Put a suit on. Ladies, put a nice, cute, beautiful dress on. You know, look good. Because rich people, they look good. Most of them, I get it. Some don't, but do you want to be a rich person or a wealthy person that look good or one that look just toe down? <laughs> it's your decision, right? So go to the places where these people are, okay? Next question for me. Talk to me. I'm in, Ma I'm in Miami. What would you recommend? Of course, like Miami? Come on, STK. You can go to uh, Nobu, Dr. Chow, uh, Mr. Chow. I mean, Miami? Really? Come on. I mean, there's so many places where wealthy people congregate. Wes, what are some practical steps in getting unstuck, even though you said don't tell yourself that you are stuck? Yeah, you listen, Age Turner, your issue is you keep thinking you're stuck. 
But if you really think deeply about that, where are you stuck exactly? Like when you, when people say I'm stuck, what they're what they mean is they just don't know the solution yet. So it's better to say, you know, I just don't know the solution yet, instead of saying you're stuck. You're not stuck anywhere, because a person is stuck. Well, how do I get out of a place that they're stuck? You need some help, right? You need somebody to pull you out. But I'm telling you, you don't need no one to pull you out of wherever you are right now. You just haven't discovered a solution. Maybe because you haven't been consistent. Maybe because you just don't believe in yourself properly. Or maybe because you haven't given yourself more time to develop the skill to become the man that you want to be. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> no, I love you too, T. Terrence, you're so funny. I, uh, <laughs> you're never at the golf course. Yeah, I can't do the golf course, honestly. Yeah, country clubs as well. How much to charge for a course? Uh, it depends on what the course is. You know, honestly, it just depends. I would say uh, it depends on what you're, you're creating here. We have courses from $37 to a hundred thousand dollars so um it depends on what you're selling honestly taryn you going to the gym tomorrow the answer should be yes let me see here uh palm beach yeah see look listen to taryn she's rich taryn's a very wealthy young lady so ladies you follow Terrence Smith there. Should tell you where the final of the wealthy men. They they flock to her. Yolanda, how are you? Daquan, how are you? Frank, hey, Sacred Circle, how are you? Good morning. Questions for me. What's going on, Frank? Questions. Talk to me. If not, I'm fit to lay down and sleep like a baby. Okay? I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Open up. We're all family here. Everybody here wants more. Okay? Period. Whatever that means to you. Everybody here wants more. Even They either want uh, a better physical body. They want more money. They want to be happy. They want to be in love. They want to feel better about themselves. They want to raise their confidence, their self-esteem. We all want more. Okay? Just not the daddy I want to fly. <laughs> uh, Terry, manifest it. Manifest. How you stop procrastinating? Well, Luis, I, I would say this. If you want to stop procrastinating... You have to give yourself a reason why you should stop procrastinating. Okay? People that procrastinate, which means not doing what you know you're supposed to do but putting it off, is because you haven't given yourself a reason why that's important. Like working out. Many of you procrastinate about working out. Raise your hand or say amen if you procrastinate when it comes to the gym. Be honest. Some of you are overweight. Some of you got that poochy pooch. Some of you gain a couple of pounds around that, you know, those love handles, the thighs, the stomach, whatever, double chin, right? You got the hot dogs in the back of your neck. So if you want to stop procrastinating, you have to give yourself a pleasurable reason on why you should go to the gym. See, most people, they go to the gym that don't particularly like going because they associate pain to the gym. They think about sweating. They think about soreness. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. So they think about the gym and they associate it as a very uncomfortable experience. Now, me, when I think about the gym, I think about sexiness. I think about, um, um, you know, building this... The incredible man, just looking, just this incredible, delicious looking man. When I think about the gym, I think about just expanding and leaning out my muscle to perfection. 
right? So I have a lot of positive associations to the gym. You know, I love the way I look when I'm pumping that muscle and just squeezing those tendons and just pulling and pushing my body to its limits here, okay? <laughs> oh, she is so funny. Does that make sense? So, okay. What you need, listen, what I want you to understand if you want to stop procrastinating is um, you have to give yourself reasons why procrastination is no longer an issue and why whatever you want to do that you're not doing, why that's important to you, okay? That's just how habits are created. Every habit or everything that we do, we we'll either associate pain to it or pleasure to it. As human beings, write this down. This is very important. We do more to avoid pain than to get pleasure. Let me say it again. Men and women do more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. Which means if you go to the gym, you can be healthy. You can look good. You can look nice. You can look fit. You can look athletic. You can have more energy, more vitality, right? That's the pleasure. However, to be that way, you have to go through the pain. It's uncomfortable. So typically people do more to avoid that. So that pain of being uncomfortable, soreness, sweating keeps us from getting the pleasure because we do more for the, the avoidance of pain instead of the achievement of pleasure. Does that make sense? <laughs> Ah, uh, Terrence says you like playing with my pleasure. See, I do too. I like pain with my pleasure. I like, I I love pain and pleasure together. Like, give me the pain, but make sure you give me the pleasure. As long as I get the pleasure, I'll take the 